Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Die of the Dead. Die of the Dead is brought to you by Radical 8 Games. It's for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes. It's time to set up the altar and cook the food, light the candles and incense, hang the decorations, and don't forget the flowers. It's the Day of the Dead, the holiday where the souls of the deceased return world of the living to reunite with their families in a celebration that has no borders. The Day of the Dead honors the memory of the dead and allows the living to show them they have not been forgotten. Players play as friendly spirits, helping guide souls up the marigold steps back to the land of the living. The first player to have one of their souls reach the village wins. All right, just a quick look at setup. First, we have the marigold steps. These steps will be assembled if need be, but the thing here is they don't start with dice. This is where you'll be placing your dice throughout the game, if you win rolls, that is, and each of the steps have different bonuses that you might be able to take advantage of. But reaching the top is where the village is, and the first player to do so is going to win the game. And then you have a series of coffins, and it doesn't really matter the order you place these coffins out, but you'll put them side by side in this configuration. But below each of the coffins is an action board, and these boards are placed in order, one, two, three, and four. They will give you a primary action and a secondary action that you can perform on your turn. And below that are your bonus tiles, as well as their tokens, corresponding tokens. Each of these bonus tiles are gonna do special things throughout the game. And there's two sides to these boards. There's an A and B side. Suggested you start with A for your first game, but there's some different abilities that these tokens can take on, and it changes radically from the A and B side. So some take note of, and you can collectively decide how and which side of these boards you want to play with. Each player will receive their own player board and matching colored dice. Now, there's three special dice in this pool. Three of these will have a skull. These skulls represent a wild, but they are your power dice, and they will be placed on the City of the Dead board because you have to earn these dice throughout the game. Now, these player boards also have two sides. They have a basic, and on the other is each player will have their own special powers and abilities, giving the game a very asymmetric feel between the players. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be rolling dice to determine who goes first. And why this is important for setup is because it will determine how you set up dice in each of the coffins. So as an example, the first player is gonna put one dice in the first and second coffin. The second player will do the same, but they're gonna be adding an additional dice to their player board so it's staged and ready. And why that's important, we'll take a look at in a minute. But Based on the players, as you move around the table, they'll get to do varying things with the different coffins, placing their dice, getting them set up and ready for play. And then finally, make sure the coffins are all flipped to the skull side face up and you're ready to begin. So in this game, your dice are known as souls and you have to prep those souls. So you're looking for a specific icon in either the coffin actions or perhaps a bonus off the marigold steps. You get that icon and you can place dice on your player board. So they're prepped and ready to move to the particular coffins. But there's all kinds of exceptions and things here with bonuses and things you can do as well. But let's take a look at coffin one. The first thing it allows you to do is move up to three prepped souls to this coffin. And you'll notice that each of the coffin actions have a primary and a secondary. So you wanna keep both of those in mind as you perform them, but the secondary in this one is looking to see if there are two or more types of souls, which means colored dice. Two different types of colored dice in this coffin will allow you to close it up and shake it and reveal the contents. If there's a one, all the coffins are going to shift. Move down by one, the last coffin then moves to the front position. And that coffin is opened. So only the coffin at position one will be open, revealing what dice are present there. Now, coffin two is all about prepping dice. So if you pick this action, this primary action allows you to prep two of your dice and put them on your player board. 
but you also, as the secondary action, have to take the coffin and shake it up, revealing the contents, and then you do a comparison. Whoever rolled the most of the highest level dice is going to win the roll off. And that person then gets to prep one of their dice, pulling the dice from their active pools, not from the coffins. Or on your turn, you've chosen to activate coffin three. Its primary action is really all about weeding out your competition, really. You're gonna take the coffin and shake it up, revealing its contents. You're gonna remove all of the same color and value. So, the only exception here is that you can't remove all of the dice. If it would leave the player with zero dice, then you still have to leave one of those in the coffin. But it's a great way to reduce the amount of dice they have in play. And the secondary action is very important here because this is where you're gonna be tapping into these bonuses. And again, based on having the A or B side will be varied throughout the different games. But like the candle, for instance, is a way that will allow you to shift coffins around. And you also have rerolls and ways to add dice to coffins throughout the game. And the bonuses really do come into play and you should use them frequently. Now, important to note that you can ever only hold two bonus tokens at the same time. So you gotta make some choices if you want a different one. And you have to discard back to the card if you choose to go with a different one. Now, there's also bonuses on the Marigold Steps, which will give you these same tokens. And then finally, we have the fourth coffin. And this is the one that's going to allow you to move dice from the coffin to the Marigold Steps on your trek to the village at the top. Now, the thing is, you're gonna take this and roll it like so many of the other coffins and reveal the contents. You're looking for the highest valued dice and the most of that highest value dice in order to win this particular challenge. If you do win, then you get to move two of your dice onto the Marigold Steps. But if you don't win as the player who chose this, some other player at the table might have won instead, moving their dice to the Marigold Steps. So there is a trade-off here. There's definitely a push your luck, hoping that your dice are gonna come out victorious here. So the secondary actions of this fourth casket are more of an either or type of situation. You can either move one of your dice from the casket to the marigold steps, or you can choose to grab one of your power soul dice and add it to your pool, or you can simply just shift the position of the caskets, maybe giving you a little bit of advantage for that next round. So there's definitely some options with this final coffin, but really its goal, your goal here is to get your dice to that position so you can move them to the Marigold Steps. Now, when you do move to the Marigold Steps, you get to take advantage of one of the bonuses that you place your dice on as you move up the steps. And they're gonna have the same bonuses that you can get at the bottom down here, or they're going to allow you to get a ghost dice or basically prep one of your dice and put them on your player board. They're all labeled with the same icons as you move up the steps and place your dice. So that's all the basics of how the actions work. And obviously throughout the game, you're trying to position yourself where you're placing dice into the coffins and shifting them to the positions where you need them, using those bonuses, using the different actions of the coffins to do so. And also important to note, on your turn, you only get to perform one of the actions of one of the coffins. And you can choose any of them. It doesn't matter if everyone has chosen coffin one throughout this round, you still get to do that as well. So they're not off limits. You really get to activate any of the coffins that you so choose. And then the player who advances to the top of the Marigold Steps, the first player to do so, placing their last dice in the village is going to win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. And everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, you know, this game is straight up beautiful. And I really like dice games in general, so this definitely appeals to me. And I like how you manipulate the dice and use those bonuses to remove other people's dice and put yours in instead and then weed people out. There's a lot of back and forth as you try to position your dice in the right place. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.